Well, Marky Dragon, also known as Marcus Hike in Barry in Real Life, and uh, today I got a really interesting question, uh, and I'm just going to call him RC. You know who you are. Uh, <clears throat> so he um, <clears throat> he says that he's disabled, and uh, he, he makes an argument here about him being disabled on uh, possibly some special rights in video games. So. Um, <clears throat> He's, uh, he's like talking about how the possibility that since he is mentally disabled that, um, uh, that he has this disability that maybe he should be allowed to bot in the games and um, because, because it would be of assistance to him and uh, help him uh, play better. Um, <clears throat> And he says that, uh, you know, his particular disability is, uh, it's a mental uh, disability. And so I'm not sure what that means, but he says that um, he, uh, it has to do with social issues. And uh, so, you know, uh, it's like, uh, you know, Asperger's or autism or, you know, something like that. I mean, I'm just talking um, because people with like Asperger's or autism could do very, very well in video games and at the same time have issues with, uh, you know, with um, interacting with people in real life. Uh, a good friend of mine uh, has Asperger's and uh, he's very hard to be around. Um, but uh, I really enjoy his company, but at the same time, like I said, he's very hard to be around. And so, <clears throat> uh, you know, and, and he has, uh, he's a very, very smart guy but uh, he has lost pretty much all the jobs that he's had. He's been fired. And so, you know, that's, um, and, and that's because of, of how he thinks and everything. And so, anyway, the question here is, is, is that, you know, if, um, if I have a disability, should that allow me other advantage in the game? Like, should I be allowed to alter the rules a bit? And um, so, you know, I was just thinking about that. Um, first, though, you know what? It's really cool this morning. Let me show you this. The camera's not really, um, really angled really well, but look at that. Uh, that is, uh, I, I actually set uh, another camera out on my roof, and um, oh, you can't see the moon anymore. Oh, barely, barely. You see it above the houses there? Uh, that was. Uh, uh, this morning you could see the moon really good as the sun was rising and it uh, took me a little while to get everything set up and so I kind of missed the prime opportunity on that. <laughs> so, <clears throat> okay, back to the subject of, of um, you know, disabilities and having uh, special advantages in game. Well, <clears throat> so I can tell you that, that I have some experience recently with disabilities and in the fact that um, Lisa broke her leg and uh, so it's um, she hasn't been able to walk with this broken leg she broke it in three places and uh, it's been uh, in fact uh, she broke it just a few days before we moved here and she had to ride in the U-Haul truck for two days with her broken leg and um, I you know that's uh, to me that would be a lot of pain um, but anyway, so she still isn't able to walk. And uh, so, you know, we want to go out and do things like, uh, you know, go to a movie or go grocery shopping or whatnot. And so we, um, uh, I found a wheelchair. I bought her on Amazon. You know, here's the amazing thing about this wheelchair is that, um, you know, I was looking on Craigslist and the wheelchairs were all 150 bucks, um, you know, uh, used. Or more and then I decided well I'm gonna look on Amazon and see what I see and I found this wheelchair that was regularly like 250 bucks it was on closeout for 75 bucks with and I have Amazon Prime and so I got it shipped for free and it arrived the next day I mean just amazing 75 bucks um, but uh, uh, so we've got uh, her a wheelchair so that, so that we can go out for these distances that require her that the crutches just aren't very good and um, and I'm noticing one 
that I really wish we had a disabled, um, you know, uh, sticker on the car to park closer because it really is a lot of extra work to do anything normal uh, in life. And um, so everything takes like three times longer and, and everything. And it, uh, you know, it's just, it's just the fact of it when, when you're not as mobile. And so I wanted to, um, you know, as we're like going into the stores and stuff like that, I'm realizing that a lot of them don't have doors that will stay open. And so here I am trying to get through the doors and everything to, um, you know, to get her wheeled in. And I, you know, I open up the door all the way and I try and, you know, push it far enough so that it like clicks and, and locks, but they're not doing that. And, you know, um, some places have automatic doors, but like we went to the theater and they didn't. And then uh, the theater had a, a spot for her to sit and everything, but um, it wasn't optimal. And, um, you know, so I think about this and I think about how uh, it's actually a law. It's Americans with Disabilities Act that uh, went into place, I think, um, I think around the year 90 or 91. And uh, that basically stated that all businesses must comply with, uh, you know, allowing disabled people into their stores and everything. And that, um, and so, you know, so like, uh, you know, any, any new buildings and stuff had to meet certain standards. You know, the restrooms have to have the bars to hold on to. The, the sidewalks, whenever they're pouring new sidewalks, the city has to put ramps at the corners. And, um, you know, th there's, other, there's other things along with that. Uh, even, uh, I can tell you that uh, when that went in, that I was a bus driver. And uh, I was driving for TriMet in Portland, Oregon. And they, uh, they taught us all of the stuff that we needed to know about the ADA and how uh, it applied to us. And so, uh, you know, one of the things was is that if someone needed a service animal. And, um, and so, anyway, I had this guy that um, is getting onto my bus. And... He uh, has a parakeet on his shoulder. It was some, some sort of bird. I think it was a parakeet. And, um, and I'm like, oh, sir, you, you can't bring that on without being in a cage. And uh, he's, like, he's like, no, no, I have a disability. And I'm like, oh, okay. And uh, I'm like, okay, so what does the bird do for you? Because I'm allowed to ask him what that does for him so I can have an understanding of it. I'm not allowed to challenge him, though, on whether or not he really has a disability. And uh, so he says, this is my seeing eye bird. <laughs> I'm like, oh. And uh, so, but I wasn't allowed to, to really challenge him further than that. But for the life of me, to this day, I can't think of, of how you know, um, a, a bird like that could be a seeing eye bird. I don't know what they're looking for that they're going to warn you of and everything. So, um, you know, I just thought that was funny going out of our way to accommodate everyone who says that they need that accommodation. Um, but, <clears throat> okay, so getting back to like video games and my experience currently with, you know, just getting a wheelchair around. Um, it's, uh, I, I would say that it is, well, you know, do I want, do I think that, um, that we require special advantage, you know, because she's in a wheelchair? And the answer is, is that no, not really. I don't, I don't think that, um, that anything special needs to be done. And, and you know, not at least at most places, but uh, is it appreciated? Oh, hell yeah. You know, we were at, um, at uh, the theater the other night, and um, we had to park a considerable distance out. And then I'm going through the parking lot, and we realize that there is this curb that is placed in between. There's, there's like this flower bank that goes for probably 
250 feet. We were in the middle of it. And so, you know, we had to choose. Do we go around this way or do we go around this way? And we couldn't walk on any sidewalks. We had to be out in the parking lot. And then when we got across uh, that barrier, there was no ramps. The ramp was another 200, 300 feet uh, down. And so we had to continue walking through this, you know, kind of like a street parking lot area. And, and I thought to myself, wow, you know, the people who designed this um, maybe uh, had never had someone who's disabled in mind, or, you know, it's like a wheelchair that, you know, and then with the front doors, we had the same problem, you know, we end up having to, to hold open the door with our foot, pulling, pulling the wheelchair through and everything. And that is, um, that is, you know, something to, to think about. So now getting back to video games. Um, so, so the, the, uh, the point in here is, is that maybe, um, he should be able to bot because he's disabled and because that'll allow him to, uh, actually work with, um, other players on more of a level playing field. And to me though, you know, I can see that. So, uh, my friend, old Pagan who, um, you know, hasn't been on any of the videos for a while, but he's a hardcore WoW player and he's about 80 years old. And uh, he has, uh, he's missing a couple of fingers on one hand. And uh, he was in, um, he was in a car accident many years ago before they had really good, um, you know, um, I don't know, it was probably in the 70s, I think it was, is when he was in the car accident and, and he lost his leg. He walks with a peg leg and, um, and it mangled his hand, one of his hands. And he, um, he's missing two fingers, I think. And, um, you know, so, and he has trouble typing with the other three. Uh, you know, because of his disability, you know, should he be allowed to run a bot? Well, you know, I can see the argument for it, and I can also see the abuse that can happen for that. And, you know, how would a game company like Blizzard actually police that? Are they going to have everybody send in paperwork from their doctor saying, hey, I'm legally disabled, I should be able to do this? And, you know, should a mental disability allow you to bot? You know, one where you're like a social issue, like Asperger's or or something like that, where you, you know, you just don't pick up on human emotion. Um, but you know, how does that apply in the game? You know, in, in the game, there's a lot of people who, who are, um, who, who match that description of having a disability where they can't read people's emotions, and that's one of the beautiful things about these games, is that they allow you to be this persona and you and you remove facial features and body language and everything or you type it in to say okay you know hmm and your character kind of goes huh. you know something like that and you know that is um you know how we can uh interact and everything but you know should that person be allowed to bot could they could they say that, well, because of my emotional, you know, problems with reading uh, people's emotions, you know, I should be allowed to bot because it takes more energy for me to, um, to interact with people. And so this will allow me to keep it on a level playing field. If I could bot for several hours a day and farm stuff, then, uh, then I'll be more level with everybody else. It'll make it fair. And I think that um, I think that it um, is you know I, I guess that that I don't buy it. Now I also uh, can say that you know I, I I'm very familiar just beyond Lisa breaking her leg. I'm very familiar with people having uh, disabilities and I interact with them regularly. And I'm a firm believer in uh, treating people as normal as possible despite their disabilities. 
And because not, not in a way of like being mean, but in a way of challenging them and helping to elevate them, to, to bring their game up. Because when, you, um, when you're blind, uh, people talk about their sense of hearing being a lot more acute and everything. And this is a compensation for their disability. And, you know, then in people who um, say, you know, are, are deaf or whatnot, who read lips and everything, that they probably read body language better than any of us. And in fact, they know how the lips are forming those words and everything as to what the person's thinking. Like an example is, um, is when someone is angry, their face may turn red and everything. And you can't tell that in a game, um, you know, unless they're, you know, typing obscenities. But uh, some, of the, some of the keys are, is, you know, they're, they're squinting, they're, they're frowning. Um, maybe they're spitting while they're talking because they're so worked up. Uh, maybe their face turns all red and everything. And, um, you know, so I guess that I just believe that everybody should be on the same playing field. And when it comes to government services and everything, yes, there needs to be other things to make it easier. But it doesn't necessarily need to be, you know, that we go out of our way. What it needs to be is that, that the, um, what it needs to be is that us to have compassion. And like, if I have, uh, we have customers sometimes that when we want to call them, they say they can't take our call because they, um, they're, they're deaf or mute. And so then, um, you know, we work around that and we go the extra mile to, to make sure that the customer gets the service that they deserve. And in fact, we put in a lot of extra effort on that uh, to work around whatever is missing. And yes, it takes more work, and everything takes more work on our part. It takes more work on the customer's part, but it um, it is not. Um, uh, I, I don't believe that we need to change the entire scope of how we do things. Now, if we can make a change that will benefit everyone and be good for them, great. If we have a lot of extra money to uh, develop other, other methods of things so that we can handle customers better who are deaf or that are blind or whatever, um, then we would do that. And, but that's because we want to. And um, there, is, there is things out there, you know, um, people who are blind talk about, you know, that you're supposed to, to annotate and put these comments in on your web pages on everything and it's really hard to to do and most people don't understand it and then like I know about this but um, I've never done it on my sites because I don't understand how to interact with it and uh, so but anyway so should you be allowed to bot because you have some sort of disability I think the answer is no and uh, at least that's my answer now um, if Blizzard wants to go out of their way to accommodate, to, to take and maybe build something into their client that would allow people who have uh, control problems, like you can only do, you only have one hand, let's say, you know, how would you, um, you know, so, so you need to make it so that you can do everything on the keyboard or you can do everything on the mouse. And you know, so um, if Blizzard were to build in features like that, which they may already have, they're big enough, they may already have, um, to, to be able to allow us to do that, uh, then props to them. That's great. Um, and the companies who um, go out of their way to support people with disabilities, um, you know, a big cheer from me because uh, those are, I mean, that, that's great that you're doing that and um, you're going to get more business. Anyone who has experience um, with uh, a disability and people needing extra assistance, even if they're not the disabled person themselves, will recognize the extra effort 
that uh, your company has gone to and it will give you goodwill and get you more business most definitely so anyway that is my thoughts on that and uh, thank you for you those of you who are watching live uh, I am uh, I have been live streaming streaming testing out uh, these new features and working on the technology behind the scenes to try and get these uh, working as good as possible uh, and uh, so um, <clears throat> that is it for this broadcast those of you who are um, watching whether it's live or on um, uh, you know on the recording afterward uh, if you have any comments about how I can improve the live portion of this like if audio is out of sync or if there's other issues going on uh, please do leave them in the comments I am reading the comments and looking to uh, improve uh, how this all works as best as possible uh, because I believe that uh, doing uh, shows where we do call-ins and everything live uh, is a big part of the future of my channel here so I'm trying to embrace that and work on that uh, anyway, that is it. Uh, those of you who are interested in War Z, it's coming out in a couple of days. It's coming out on the 31st, tomorrow. And uh, so this is probably the last time that I'm going to use this uh, exit that has all of these War Z codes in here. Thank you to everyone who sent me War Z codes. If you sent me, I got so many of them that I couldn't take, I couldn't handle all of them. And so if you sent me some War Z codes and, um, and they didn't appear in this, uh, you know, post them in comments uh, as a reply, or even if you did send them to me and they appear in here, post them as a reply in here so that uh, other people can pick them up. Uh, so tomorrow, starting tomorrow, you'll be able to use these codes in order to uh, get a two-day trial. And um, it will, um, I, it's only one per person. There's only so many of them that play in this exit, but get your pen and paper out, ready to write, and uh, maybe you'll get lucky enough to be able to use it. I'm Marky Dragon. 